Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Bell Ringers podcast here with Colin Bailey and Ben Goldstein of Philly Sports Sports. Today, we have a very interesting one, probably our only uh, spring training upload, I believe, where we'll be talking about everything spring training. We got a summary, we got some takeaways, some position and roster battles we got going on. So uh, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, ben, let's give us a little introduction of yourself. Ben Goldstein, back with you again, founder of Philly Sports Sports here, big Phillies fan. Um, I'm really interested to see, uh, how this, po- how this episode turns out because, uh, I have some very strong opinions. As do I. So let's get right into this then. So spring training, this has been, I think a good spring training so yeah. far. I believe they're seven and six, their record. Um, you've seen a lot of players perform and a lot of players underperform and a lot of players overperform. So what are your thoughts on that, Ben? Um, Obviously, the underperformances are scary, I'll say. Um, but I will say that there's a few people that have serious – there's a few guys that have seriously impressed me, and I'll say those in a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. I think the underperformance um, – I think that the guys – I don't want to go right into names yet, but I think a lot of the guys who we saw underperform last year – I think we're seeing guys. similar things this year. Yeah. I think there are also guys who are going to improve as the season goes on. I think there are guys who have gotten significantly better since last season. So the first name I want to go to is D.D. Gregorius. Yep. And I think that kind of ties in with what I just said about for a reason, right? I, he had he says that he had an elbow injury that restricted him from – doing some of the things that we know he's capable of based on his previous performances and previous seasons. And I, I I think he, I think he might be back. He just looks so much more comfortable at the plate at shortstop. He made an incredible play at shortstop, multiple incredible plays actually. Um, But he just seems so much more comfortable in that position. And he just looks like he's playing more naturally than he was in 2021. Um, He looks more like prime Yankees, Didi Gregorius, than he has ever. And I know it's only spring training. We're just getting started. But I'm being 100% with you. He looks like a rejuvenized guy. It's like I'm looking at a different player out there. The elbow injury obviously held him back um, last year. So, obviously, he's healed. Um, He's been hitting the ball well. The defense has been what seriously has impressed me. Did you see that play the other day where it hit off of the Eflin's glove? And he, yeah. That was unbelievable. He dove out for it. Yeah, and then Segura with the Kennedy arm over the first. Um, I I think Didi's going to be – I think Didi's back. I think he has a very good year this year, and I think uh, he's going to be better than what people think. I agree. I think that the other thing is just his power seems to be back and the swing seems to be so much smoother. I think he was taking really choppy swings last year. And I think that was a product of his elbow injury. Yeah. I think I'm not an expert on swinging. I don't think Ben is either. But um, it seemed that he was really – his swing was choppy and then his elbow was kind of dropping. And I assume that had a lot to do with his injury. This year, uh, he seemed to be a lot more fluid with his swing. Um, it seems like he's following through better. And I just think it's more of him having the strength to do it and not necessarily muscular strength. I mean – the strength, A, mentally, and B, just because he's not hurt, right? He doesn't have something wrong with his elbow. Yeah, I agree. So the, so the next player I think we should go to is Alec Bohm. And if we recorded this yesterday, I would have said he has traded or starts in AAA. Now I think he completely changed things. And I know it's – now I, do, I don't agree with this, actually. I really do not agree with this. I don't think Alec Bohm should make the opening day roster. My reasoning for this is he had one good game. He went two for three. He had a solo home run and had, I think, a single or a double. Yeah, something like that yesterday. Yeah, he was two for three. So this guy has averaged above the 200 line, so above the Mendoza line. And I think people see 180 and 210 so much differently. People see 240 and 270. Even though it's the same, right, it's the same exact ratio. That's why I hate batting average. So do I. I think if you're over 200, like a guy who's 199 and 201 is so much different than a guy 
who's 239 and 241 or 279 and 281. Like, I don't get that. Like the Mendoza line, the 200 line is so influential in the way people see them as a hitter for this specific season. Yeah. Um, going back to Bohm, um, has he done anything spectacular at third base in spring training? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Exactly. I think he actually has the most errors. I think he has two errors already. Perfect. Bryson and he's Stott. played in – uh, not Bryce Stott. Alec Bob, I believe – I think he'll make – Joe will have him in the opening day roster. He won't start. Um, if he starts, we're going to have a problem. Oh, yes. And it will not just be Joe or the team. It will be the entire fan base. I guarantee. People will go nuts. We will have a problem if he if he starts. But um, I, I think he – I think he'll have a nice little spot on the bench for him. And I, don't know I agree. Yeah, I don't know. I just I can't see him in the lineup. This, even though I mean, unless he does something spectacular this last week, like he hits 500 this week, and really he could start it off and so starts out on a hot streak. I think he's young. You have to give him the chance to see if that continues, right? But like I said, unless it's something that's extraordinary that we haven't seen out of him since his 2020 season, he doesn't get the nod at third base. No, he won't. Um... I don't even know if they continue to start him at third the rest of the um, spring training and get Stott some more reps before. Um, I think he needs it. Yeah, I think he needs to start before Friday. But um, because things are going to change for Stott, right? It's going to be a lot different competition. Yeah, it's um, he's never played in the major leagues before, which is why I was a little, little iffy on him starting. But I feel like he's uh, I feel like he's ready. Um. I see. I think that I actually disagree with that. I think this is a perfect time to get him started, right? So I can't say when they bring guys up, especially highly regarded guys like Stott, Boehm, um, King, or they were highly regarded when they were brought up, like Stott, Boehm, Kingery. Um, back down. And then, or they have them like get three at bats in two games, or you know, they get like the seven at bats in nine games. Yeah, that's you know, the Phillies. That that doesn't that does enough. That actually hurts them. They're going um, from get, batting in the three spot every day to being a platoon player or a bench player. Like if you want to keep them going, if you want to keep a uh, stock going, you need to give him reps at third base every day. And I do think this is the time for him. I mean, if he was up there doing average, then I'd maybe say start him in AAA and bring him up when they have an injury or want to give him a chance. But the way he's playing, you can't just ignore that. No, he's – um. He's incredible. He makes he makes third base, which is the second hardest position in baseball, look easy. Yeah. And he's hitting the ball like it's a little soft toss against an eight year old. Yeah, it's incredible. Like he so, just, his swing is so sh- his swing. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I never realized this until someone mentioned it. I don't remember who it was. Um, might have been Destiny Legardo. Um, I think she said, yeah, I think it was her. His swing looks so much like Bobby Abreu. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know if it was Destiny. Like the finish? I think it might have been Tim. Tim Kelly? Tim Kelly. I believe. Yeah, I, that's possible. I'll check it. But it's really I, – I did notice that, and it's it's crazy. And even though, like, you know, the same kind of style of hitting is similar too. Um, now, you said his name, so we, said we got to go to Stott. We said, we said, boom, we got Didi. I think the next guy has to be center field, Moniak and Verling. So I think um, at this point, you can go. I I'm think at this point, this. it's kind of down to just Verling and Moniak. Uh, the center field job, I think, really got really changed over the last. So since the last time we recorded a pod, we had Odubel was active. Odubel was active. Mm-hmm. We had. Yeah, it was Tim Kelly. Adam Hazel. Yeah, Adam Hazley was still a Philly. And Luke Williams is still a Philly. Mickey Moniak was starting his home run streak. And Matt Verling was kind of just a nobody at that point. Mm-hmm. Not a nobody, but a guy who was just in the running with everyone else. Now, Luke Williams is a giant. Sad. Very sad. 
Adam Hazel. Adam Hazel is even more sad, and I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, he's not with the Phillies anymore. And now Odubel has an oblique injury. He's out for four to six weeks, probably down to about three to five now, maybe two to four. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're left with Mick. Uh, Mickey Moniak and Matt Verling. Matt Verling gets to start in center field. That's no, that's without a doubt. Um, but I think that Mickey Moniak's going to get some time, like some serious time. I and think his I think, numbers aren't great, but he's so different and it's so obvious too. Yeah, I think Girardi flip flops Verling and Moniak. I think Verling gets to start for opening day, but I've loved, love. Mickey Moniak this spring training. I mean, he's hitting the ball like he never has before. I mean, when we see him in the major yeah. leagues, he's horrible. Not since that first season. When we, that yeah, first season he had in the minor leagues. Mm-hmm. He was excellent. It, he, um, and, and I'm not going to lie. I'm still not a Mickey Moniak fan at all. I'm still, not a, I'm still not a Moniak fan. I've never been. But I want him to prove me wrong. That's what I want. Um. Yeah, I've hated Moniak every single time they brought him up. But I um. I think he gets that fifth outfielder job with the team, and he he's gonna play, and he's gonna play well. I think with how I believe he's changed his stance a little, and he's he just looks much more comfortable in the box. So yeah. So he's recording this on Saturday. It'll be and he's and Sunday. he's fine. He's fine in center field. He could feel the ball. Yeah, and so as you know, they're Philly starting a game. We're recording this on Saturday. It'll be uploaded tomorrow. You know, he's, I believe they're playing a game in 17 minutes, 12.50 right now. So, yeah, so he's not starting today, Moniac. Um, I don't think. Actually, I'll look. Yeah, yeah he's not so starting today. But today, the I lineup, do, his numbers today the lineup is Schwarber, JT, Castellanos, Didi, Gene, Alec Bulb, uh Camargo, Matt Vierling. He has looked good though. The last um, he's hitting two sixty nine with a one thousand OPS, um, and that was after a day yesterday when he was he put up an offer. So, yeah, I do have a little. I have a little bit more confidence in him at the plate. Uh, I'm hoping he can adjust the major league pitching. But um, another guy who I we also really need to adjust is Kyle Schwarber. I mean, he has. I hate to say this, he's been horrendous. And I get it that he, you know, he had a baby two weeks ago or whatever. You know, he didn't probably didn't get a ton of reps in this offseason. He was late this spring training. And I do think one relevant factor is he jumped right into games. Yeah. He had no time. Like the guys had, I think, three or four days when they were just practice. Mm. Sure, we might have had one or two days where he just did some light stuff. And then he got put right into a game situation. He never and really got he has- time to – like actually start like slow. He just it's kind of so like I guess when it's not. It's kind of like when you're work, when you start working out, but you don't know where to start, and you basically start with thirty curl, like like curling thirties instead of starting at fives and making your way up. Right. Or like when you're on the or when you're on the elliptical, and you go immediately to twenty minutes, but you should be starting at ten. Right. I That's think what that he, yeah, and I think the Schwarber – and I, the thing that worries me is the strikeouts, right? I mean, if it was ground balls, lazy fly balls, like that's just getting adjusted. But the strikeouts do worry me a little bit. Like, it's not the lack of power, the lack of contact. Because it's really the stri- – it's just the strikeouts. I mean, I, I guess it's just him not putting the ball in play. I know he's going to strike out. You know, everyone strikes out. I know he – He's a power hitter. He's going to strike out probably more than the average guy. And I just, well, it does bother me a little bit. I know he'll pick it up. I'm just hoping that it's, you know, not in the middle of June. Right? Because we need a little bit sooner than that. Yeah, he, he'll be fine. Now, the I other don't... thing that I do wonder is if having a guy like Schwarber on your team is good because the Phillies are known for starting the season off smoking hot then dying towards the end of the season. Not as much last year, but like 2018 and 2019, they were horrendous the last years, the last like two and a half months of the season. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Like they picked up all these guys Mm -hmm. and they did fine, but the rest of the team just died. Like, you know, they picked up Wilson Ramos as Drupal Cabrera, who at the time were good. 
And they're like, oh, no, we got his dribble. We got Wilson. We can take, we can relax now. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. And that's what I guess I'm hoping that Schwarber being the opposite of the traditional Phillies team maybe gives them a spark at the end of the season. I think. I don't know. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. This kind of happened last year. This is why I think Harper shouldn't have won MVP. He didn't get a single hit. He didn't touch first base once in that Brave series at the end of the year when they got swept. Schwarber's a guy, as you were saying, who picks it up later. He'll give you production if you need that right there. Obviously, now we have to compete with the Mets and the Braves, who, by the way, I want to quickly touch on the Mets after this. And they're uh, recent downgrades. But, um, uh, yeah, I think Schwarber's... Uh, I th- you were saying he's like the clear opposite of this team what we've been, and I agree with that. And I, um, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um. In terms of roster spot, actually, I do want to touch on the Mets real quick. This is a major, excuse me, major spring training update. Jacob Degrom is hurt, like, and it's not like a little sore arm or something. It is completely. It's like this is a significant injury, and I do think that the Mets are kind of. Um, for lack of a better term, dumbing it down and making it seem that it's not as bad as it is. Didn't they say that he had shoulder soreness? Is that what it was? Yeah, they said shoulder tightness, I believe. So what I don't get is he said shoulder tightness and he's being reevaluated in four weeks. Is that correct? Is that, did I hear that right? Something like that. Yeah. That that doesn't add up. Shoulder tightness is usually I'll be reevaluated in two to three days. I'm talking about four weeks. I don't really – there's something strange there. I mean, unless I'm missing something, then there's something really weird. No, I think you're right. His, um, the shoulder tightness is usually something that will get resolved in a few days. I don't understand Fidelio is there. Yeah, he – um, it's his usual shoulder problems for Jacob DeGrom that's holding him mm-hmm. back. And then also Scherzer has a hamstring issue now. I don't know if you saw that. I did, but the Mets. He's had be, hamstring before, though. Mets might be without their top two starters, the two aces of the National League, to start the season. So, which means that David Peterson will enter their rotation. He is oh. not good, as we know. And they I'm going to bring someone up from AAA. Ike, I don't think they do. Unfortunately, I hated that guy. Unfortunately, I'm saying unfortunately because I'd love to face him. For them, that's very fortunate. Um, you know who I was a big fan of in the Jared I- Jared Ikoff era? Oh. Jeremy Hellickson. Oh, I loved Hellickson. I don't know he was why. Ace. Was. And you know his pitching mechanics were so strange. He, he was just, so he just like, threw the ball. He did like he was so stiff. I know. He I swear that guy could throw the ball 110 miles per hour, but it looks like he chose to throw a 90. <laughs> am I, I mean am I right? I think he. He looked like he was throwing batting practice. He just like he had he like he was just having a, back foot. like a pregame catch, and he was just yeah ninety eight miles an hour right down the pipe. I mean, he sucked, but I mean, I don't, I, I did not understand that guy. I just didn't understand him. He seemed like he was just completely out of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, why does this? I was almost want to say sometimes, is he trying? Like, what's he doing out here? Where is he now? He, he was – I'm sure he's retired. He was older when we had him, though, so. Um, yeah, that is that is really strange. Yeah, loved Hellickson. One of my favorite players of those horrible teams. Um, yeah, he's retired. He wasn't the Nats. I remember that, but. Yeah. I My two favorite – I adored Michael Franco like everyone did, but Freddie Galvis – Oh, I was a big Galvis fan, too. It was unbelievable at shortstop back in the day. The Phillies seriously could have traded him and, like, Franco for or someone really good, but they decided not to because they are rebuilding. But, um, yeah, I Galvis was really good back then. Anyway, back to spring trading. I don't um, remember where we I were. I think the roster spot ba- – yeah, roster spot battles – I don't actually think there's a lot right now. The Phillies don't have a lot of depth in younger guys. I think the biggest one right now is going to be the infield spot on the bench. You got Camargo, Torres, 
uh, Maton. I think only two of those guys make it. Right now, I think I want to give the nod to Torres and Camargo. And my reasoning behind that is oh. I think Maton, you can't sit. I don't think he can sit on the bench all the time. I think he needs to go down to the minor leagues and start every day. Who, are you, who is this, Bodiak? No, um, Camargo. Oh. I'm talking about uh, the infield position, I think. So it's really down to three. Camargo, um, Torres, and Maton. I think it's going to go to Camargo and Torres. I don't think Maton needs – I think Maton needs to go down to the minor leagues and play every day. Uh-huh. Camargo is a veteran. He'll do fine off the bench. He's been off the bench his entire career, and he performs well. Yohan Camargo is the best bench bat in the National League East. That is a fact. I will say that right now. All right. That is- he killed it for the Braves. I swear, every time that guy – well, actually, I shouldn't say this fact because I really have no idea. But I swear, every single time he came up to bat against the Phillies in a pinch hit position, he hit a home run. Him and well, Pablo Sandoval. does that against the Phillies. That's true. But him and Pablo Sandoval. <laughs> and even when he started, he was ripping doubles down the line. Hard singles. I mean, he he's just a, he's a, he's like Brad Miller. He's a professional hitter. Yeah. And I think Ronald Torres is just depth. He's just there to fill a spot defensively. You know, I don't think he's going to get a lot of time, but I think Torres is a more developed player than Maton, and I think they're more worried about. I think they'd rather conserve Maton and play Torres than get rid of Torres and kind of waste Maton by sitting on the bench in the major leagues. Yeah, I agree. Um, I've always liked Torres, um, especially when he had that magic. But um, I agree. He has to be up here. He has to be in the uh, – definitely has to be up in the major leagues. Yeah. Start. I mean, how, could, I don't you, think he, I don't how think could you not love this man? Roto. You love, Roto. Everyone loves Roto. How Roto. can you not love Roto? All right, let everyone me get this Roto. out of my thing. But um, yeah. So uh, actually, so I got the um opportunity to go down to spring training in Clearwater. I I know I'm the worst, <laughs> but you know it was. Really I saw fun. you. I, I saw you on a. Uh, I think I on saw TV. You. I know you sent me that. Yeah. That was was it out in the out in left field. Yeah. Right by the Phillies bullpen. And that was mm-hmm. me. Yep. I was um very close to Vlad's home run. Uh, actually landed in foul territory after the bounce. Well, he actually hit off the wall, so I did not get it. Um, did get a few toss ups though. That was cool. I visited, um, I visited Baycare Ballpark in Clearwater, Florida. I visited TD Ballpark. I think. Did you in have um in Lakeland, Florida? And black, I visited. Do you have black shorts on that day and a red T-shirt and sunglasses? Yep. That's right. Right. Black sunglasses, Phillies hat, mm-hmm. a Dubal Herrera jersey, and black Under Armour shorts. Yep, that's you. Yes, it is. And a glove. And a glove. Uh, a Rawlings, hard to hide. Yep. So that was actually a good game. I'd say out of all the ballparks, definitely Blue Jays in Dunedin was my favorite. Um, I didn't say the whole game. I had to catch a flight back to Philadelphia. And the Tampa airport was about 30 minutes away, so I had to leave in, like, the fourth or fifth inning. And I wish I got to stay because that was my favorite ballpark. Probably followed up by Clearwater where the Phillies were, and then I wasn't a big fan of Lakeland. Oh, Interestingly, though, the Tigers have won Grapefruit League Ballpark of the Years three straight years. I liked the least, though. I just didn't really like the setup of it. Um, I don't know. The setup just kind of it – was, it was really different, and it was felt more like a football stadium to me. Like half football stadium, half like single A stadium. But uh, some takeaways from Philly spring trainings. Um, the minor league guys kind of practice on the left side, and they had um, George Steinbrenner. No, that's the Yankees. They had um, the Phillies, the main stadium there, Bay, Bay Care. I'm messing them all up now because I was so many. Um, but the facility is really nice. So while I got to walk around, I got actually the opportunity to meet with the Phillies 2020 first round draft pick Mick Abel Mick. everyone calls him Mick Abel 
but uh, the guy next to me asked, his name is Mick, uh, Mick Abel. Yeah, it's Abel. So it was, it was really cool to, uh, I had a few word um, back and forth conversation with him. That was really nice. Um, I met Matt Verling and I met Paco Figaro, which is kind of cool too. Um, I had, I met Matt Verling in Trenton last year. Yeah, he's really cool. Yeah. Um, I got him to sign my hat. I also got to meet Zach Hample. So for those of you who don't know who Zach Hample is, he is a ball hawk who catches baseballs at baseball games. He has a ridiculous number of baseballs that he's caught in his lifetime. Almost 12,000, I believe. pretty much hated by most people in baseball. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm not a Zach Hample fan. But I couldn't pass up the opportunity to get a picture with him. I have to put that picture right up on the screen here. Um, really, really cool guy. Um, he, I actually saw him catch his first ball of the day. Got from the bullpen. He used the glove trick. So that was really neat to meet him. Got a picture with him. Like I said, it's probably on the screen right now. All right. Um, so that was interesting. Definitely interesting. I love Zach Hample. I've been watching Zach Hample for six or seven years. Um, I've only tried to meet him 400 times. And I was supposed to, I was actually supposed to meet him sometime. But uh, Mr. President decided to come down in the city. And it was a madhouse. And I couldn't. And I, it was, if I tried to get down to the stadium to meet him, I, um, I would have been there by the time the game was over. So. How'd you find out he was there? He was with the pandemic crew for a game. And I remember he posted it. I was like, I I have to meet him. So, but I didn't. um, And you know, the thing is, and you know, that actually like that, that kind of stuff bothers me because you would have enjoyed it so much more than I would have. I'm not even a Hamble fan. And actually, at first, I was going to get a picture with him. I just saw him there. I was like, oh, Zach Hample. I don't know. I just can't. I know he doesn't keep all the baseballs, but still. I mean, he should be giving most of them away, I think. He gives. no one but, really wants. I believe he gives most of them away. Um, he does except, now, I know. I mean, he should have a room for him in his apartment. So. He, um, he catches, like, the special ones, like the home runs or yeah. the, um, the game. The I game can keep those ones. over. You got to toss up from a coach or something. You can get that to a kid. Yeah, he gives those. That has really no meaning. That's good. And I will say, I, I he has kind of gained on me a little bit. I, I was I hated him for a long time, but I think he, he's become, I think, a little bit less. And he does not push kids out of the way. I hate when people say this. If, he, if there's video evidence of him pushing a kid out of the way, show it to me. No one has ever claimed that they've seen him do it. So yeah, yeah, that's that's, why, that's interesting. That's why that was interesting. That. But um, some takeaways from Clearwater. Um, you know, I was actually really impressed with how organized everything was down there. Um, there was actually a group of journalists staying in my hotel, which is kind of neat. Um, did you give any cards were, to any special people? They were, but I did talk to a man um, who somehow knows Jack Fritz. Oh. And that was really cool. So I did give him a I did uh I did shout out the pod. Told him to check it out. Um and that was a whole group of guys there, so I didn't have enough cards to give out to them. But I just told I told him to check it out. Some Phillies fans from Florida actually. Um who this is actually a really cool story. They a whole group of guys that were there who were born in the Philadelphia, Delaware Valley region and moved down to Florida and they come down to Clearwater to watch them play spring training every year. So I always found that really cool um, that they get to, you know, still cheer for their team from the uh, from down south, which is, which is nice. But, uh, yeah, it was actually a really fun experience, and I've never been to spring training before. I think we actually might go again next year, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, uh, planning is, per the sources, um, I will be the spring training next year. I assume the sources are the parents. It's exciting. Uh I cannot confirm or deny that. <laughs> Mine too. I I think we have. I think you have very similar sources there, Ben. Um, but uh, it's it's actually really cool like, the dynamic of it. Like I watched uh, Kyle Dohey walk right through the fence. Going from major league camp to minor. I I could have. I mean, this is a horrible. I could have jumped him right there. I mean, I would I would have been infamous for it, but <laughs> that's that's good. I love that. That's a good image. <laughs> send that to me i like that um but yeah i mean yeah it's um like they just walk right through 
Um, you can go watch practice. That's another really cool thing. You can get in this facility and watch them practice any time throughout the day. Mm-hmm. You can just walk right in. It's awesome. Um, you can watch them on the field. I mean, it's like watching. It's really it's like watching. Once you get in, it's like you're going to like a like a baseball tournament and like some of those complexes they have, like Ripken, um, Sports at the Beach, Diamond Diamond Nation. For those of you who know those, what those are, it's really the same thing. But it's just major league, my, minor league players for the most part. Um, and they play games down there too. So, like for instance, on Friday, I was watching the Phillies game. If I went up to the outfield and looked through a fence, I could have watched Phillies versus Tigers minor league game. The weird thing is, like, that's no one knows about that though. Like, unless you're in Clearwater. Like, did you ever know they played the minor league games there? I never knew that. You probably did. I, I did know that, um, because I remember one of my friends went down and told me a while ago. Yeah, but I I did but, know that. I never really like paid attention to it though. Right. Place, it yeah, and I thought that was so cool. And, like, it was the exact same thing that was going on in the major league field down in the minor league field. But, you know, it looked like a little again. You know, there was no fans. There was one set of bleachers on each side. Dugouts that had, like, just a, a bench and a roof on them. I mean, <laughs> it was really, really cool. Right? I mean, I'm sure that they, the minor leaguers hate spring training. Because, you know, they get to play at actual ballparks, but in the regular season, but not in spring training. But um, overall, I do think this is going to be a really exciting season for the Phillies. I think there's been – I would say there's been more good than bad come out of spring training so far overall. Um, yeah. we, can, we really see how good Bryson Stott is. Mickey Moniak seriously turned crap around. And did you go – No one like, expected that to come. Yeah. I'm pretty sure everyone expected Moniak to go back to the minor leagues. Oh, but one thing I wanted to touch on. Back up catcher. Backup catcher, Colin Daly. Yes, sir. Backup catcher right there. Behind the dish, catching Sir Anthony. So, um, my school was struggling to find a softball coach. So, me and my friend went up to the principal. <laughs> yeah, we go. <laughs> so, we go, oh we hear you're uh, having trouble finding a softball coach. And they were like, yeah. You're like, so me and his name's John. Me and John were like our, they, to enter our names into the running to be the softball coach. And he, the principal actually said, I'll think about it. I mean, that's, no way. They got a softball coach. But, um, oh man, it would have been, <laughs> been hilarious. Because I know, we have like, two soft, we actually have two softball coaches at our school. So, yeah, we have no shortage there. I think we hired two random people. I don't know who they are. Yeah, we have seventh grade coach and eighth grade coach, so we we combined into one team. Mm. Yeah, that's cool though. I mean, I don't know. I just think that you don't really have to be very qualified to be a middle school sports coach. So, but I I want to be. I'll try. I'd try that when I'm older. I mean, obviously you umpire, so you know a little bit about you know coaching younger kids and stuff. So, yeah, I've very had cool. to uh, cancel my first two. Uh umpiring things because I had one on Thursday when I was concussed. Couldn't even see. Ooh. Couldn't even see, so I don't know how I would call behind the dish. And then I had one on April 4th, but I'll be at the Phillies – or not April 4th, April 9th, but I'll be at the Phillies game, so I could So you haven't even done one yet? No. Wow. But I have one – waiting for the first game. I believe two weeks is my first one. I'm doing 10U softball. In the oh, field. my gosh. In the field, so that'll be fun. Oh, I die. I could do that. There's no shot I could do that. But yeah. no, so who do you think for backup catcher? I think I'm going to go with Garrett Stubbs, unfortunately. Yeah, give me Stubby. I mean, <laughs> I mean are we talking about what, what we want or what we think is going to happen? Dude, I, mean, I haven't even been like. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't really care, to be honest. I don't think it really means going to mean much. No, get, get Nappy back. I'd do that. I mean, I like Marshawn. I think out of between Nap, Stubbs, and Marshawn, I like Marshawn. I also but like I don't, Marshawn. But Marshawn's not going to get the nod. He already got sent down. Mm-hmm. So it's I between, met Rafael Marshawn. Hold on. Between Donnie Sands and Garrett Stubbs. And I think that's kind of a giveaway. Got to get the Stubbs, right? Yeah, give it to Stubbs. The only one there with major league experience other than Marshawn, who I don't 
I still don't get it. Why did Marshawn not get, get the nod there? I don't know. I love. I feel like he's like so it. much. I feel like he's so much better. But again, not my place to judge there. But, um, there was so much we could do. Right. Because they, you know, they apparently listen to us. Mm-hmm. Yes, so here's, all the time. here's me and Mickey Moniak. That's cool. And then this is Veerling in the back. Oh, wow. I don't know who the guy in that front of That was a good day is. for you. Yeah, and here's Marshan. That's nice, man. Yeah, I met Brogdon. I have a whole baseball. That's cool. Full of autograph from that Lehigh Valley team last year. That absolutely was absolutely brutal. Except Mr. May- team, yes. Mr. Mayton, Mr. Howard, and Mr. That's Gregorius funny, like- decided to use the uh, back door under the stadium that no one knows about. And you met them? That's awesome. No, they May Todd, Spencer Howard, and Didi Gregorius decided to use the underground exit, and no one know where they went. Oh, so I see. That's that. That sucks. Yeah, that's so. who I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think, and I actually I have a ball full of autographs from um probably the same group of guys, but it was like three years ago, and they were down in Jersey Shore with the Blue Claws, um, and I got like Damon Jones, Connor Brogdon. Will Stewart, uh, Zach Warren, who we've seen this spring. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I got – But overall, though, good spring I, training. So, I'm happy. Yeah, I that. met Adam Hazley. It was like his third game. Uh, Hayes, with, Hayes is cool. His third game with the Blue Claws. They were still Lakewood at that time. Yeah, I don't know why they changed your name. I do like um, Jersey Shore better. I kind of more saw him. aesthetic Castellanos just got a uh, two-run single. Make it a there four you nothing. go. That'll make it a four. Four to nothing? Ball game. No, two nothing. Holy. Okay, I was gonna say the game just started. Like, no, two nothing. Um, so I went up to him. I was like, "Yo, Hayes." He was like, "Yo," and then uh, he signed my program. I gotta go and try and find that. So I was. Really mm, shocker! Bryce Harper has a hit. Oh, big surprise! Bryce Harper, sure by the way. Yeah. Bryce Harper, by the way, is gonna have another very good year, but he will not be the MVP. My prediction. No. I agree. Well, that is, I think, all we've got for you guys today. Um, so we should put a wrap on our episode. We should go a little longer than I think we thought it would go. Um, that's a very interesting tool there. What exactly did that do? This is a pen. I picked oh. it up, and it was like this, and it's kind of interesting. Yeah, very interesting, actually. Very, interesting. very, very interesting. Um, <laughs> that's that's all we got for you guys today. Thank you all for tuning in, and um, we have a very special – episode coming out for our fifth episode very shortly so you might stay tuned for that i think that's going to be coming out on thursday or friday so keep your eyes peeled for that and you will definitely definitely enjoy that one so make sure to follow us on twitter all that information is um right down there so uh do that right now because you do not want to miss anything that we post on twitter on youtube instagram or any of our other social medias and i think that's all you got is that all we got ben yeah, that's it. All right. Tobias Harris that, is uh, Tobias Harris is dominating, by the way. Just love it. We love some Toby domination. Love some. All Toby. right. Thank you all for watching. See ya.